Hi, I'm Buck. I'm having a bad hair day and I have three guitars. They're all colored differently, which means they all sound different. In sunlight, a blue guitar will sound different than in moonlight or when you're on stage with stage lights. It sounds different because of the paint color. It has nothing to do with the wood or the pickups. Okay, that's a bunch of bull I'd also like to show you that I've got some frog tape and I've got some 3D glasses. I forget what I was going to say. But this video is not about me. This video is about my friend Tom, Tom Given. We had met in the early 90s. I've known Tom for about 20 years now. We worked together at Steve's Music Store in Queen Street West and we got along really well because our senses of humor were just whacked and I found out very quickly that he was a very creative guy. Uh, he's an artist of all sorts, photographer, painter. He's he, he does voiceover stuff sometimes, and he writes really well, too. And I wanted to get his story on video. I'd love to. I saw your vinyl collection. Well, I have about 3,000 records, and uh, yeah, I knew Randy Rhodes, whatever. <laughs> I grew up in Burbank, California, and at that time, I saw the Beatles at nine years old on Ed Sullivan. I walked in that room one person, and I walked out another forever really? forever three songs I'd never seen power like that I'd never felt that feeling I'd never heard anything so perfectly organized harmonizing voices over these churning guitars with the sound of churning right and this man I thought was almost like driving a car in back of them which was Ringo behind his drum set how long have you been playing? drums since 1965 I was 10 years old. I got my first kit. <clears throat> my dad hated every moment. I he hated the Beatles. He hated drumming. Hated my artwork. He was a Navy guy, very right wing. And he bought me a Japanese St. George kit. There were a slew of them in the 1960s. My parents divorced in fifth grade. I moved across town. And uh, my friend was the first drummer. My best friend, who I grew up playing drums with simultaneously, ended up being the drummer in Quiet Riot with Randy Rhodes in their first incarnation. And I'd always go see them playing at the Starwood in Hollywood, or they'd come down to my house actually, because we had a little recording room that, it's a long story, but Drew is his name and his mother was a real estate queen of Burbank. And she uh, bought our house that my wife and I rented because there was a recording studio and I was in a recording, I was in a band with Drew's brother, Kent, the jungle band, best name ever, and uh, and Drew was in Quiet Riot, and all of Quiet Riot, Randy Rose included, would come down, and I'd always see these guys, you know, in high school, and they were friends, you know, and Randy was like the greatest guy, and he'd see me a year later, Tom, how you doing, man? Then I moved to Canada in 1982, I brought a drum set with me, and uh, then I played in a succession of original and cover bands, dragging drums all over the place, and eventually certain things, like driving down from Lindsay, playing the electric tomato, 2.30 in the morning, 100 bucks in my pocket from the gig, and I'm following tire tracks in the snow from a giant truck that's up ahead of me, going 50, thinking, I have a six-year-old son, why am I doing this for 100 bucks? place I played a couple times before and made my hundred bucks and we're gonna make more than that there's some kind of football thing going on I you know really oh cool I invite some friends you know and some friends show up for the first time you know it's supposed to be a big night everybody you know yeah I, I was mic'd I was ready you know and hardly buddy anybody's in the audience at the end of the night my beer drinking Neil Young wannabe friend comes out and he goes they only gave us a hundred bucks and I thought, well, that's cool, because I only made 100 here before. No, I mean total. And he gives me my 25 bucks for a Saturday night and takes his 25 as well. He worked at a job at the time. I didn't. Wow, I love the music business. That moment was playing with the Leslie Spitz. They, cop they picked me up for a year. They were a Juno Award winners. They were a popular band. And I just had a really good year with them. We played the the uh, Ontario Place Forum was the last show they did before they changed it to the Molson Molson whatever it is now, and uh, and I never walked on a stage to four thousand people, and so that was a real rush, you know. Yeah, you still play. I play alone by myself 
for about 20 minutes a day with my headphones and my iPod. I do a song shuffle. Why drums and why did you fall in love with drums? Uh, well, I think that's the same as you with guitar. You know, it's kind of like a thing. It just fits eventually. You know, I remember just this was happening when I, Ringo and drummers, it was kind of ballsy and I needed to be a guitarist and I was a drummer. So that was a big mistake in my life. I should have played piano or guitar. I'm teaching watercolor classes. That's kind of fun. I never thought I'd do that in my life. Never. I'm almost 60, guys keel over my age, so whatever, man. I just keep on painting and doing what I can. Maybe I'll meet a guitarist I like. <laughs>